these Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. Bioware suggested that Obsidian should be offered a Knights of the Old Republic license due to the familiarity with Obsidian's past work and the good relationship between the two developers, as well as due to finding LucasArts' development schedule for the sequel to be too tight. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. And now, they shall see what you have. Become. Obsidian drafted the original story of Knights of the Old Republic 2 before the first game was even released. Like its predecessor, the game is set in the Star Wars universe 4000 years before the events of The Phantom Menace and is based on the D20 system developed by Wizards of the Coast. Knights of the Old Republic 2 starts five years after the events of the first game and follows the story of the Exile, a Jedi Knight who was exiled from the Jedi Order. During this time, the Jedi Order has been almost completely wiped out by the Sith. The game begins with the protagonist waking up from unconsciousness on an asteroid mining facility and after the player escapes with the help of their party members, they find the person who exiled them ten years ago. This sends the player on a mission to seek out the remaining Jedi to fight against the Sith. Tell me, do you recall what happened? The combat of Knights of the Old Republic 2 is identical to its predecessor, but several new lightsaber forms were added to the game. Each of them is useful for a different situation. One is best for enemies using blaster weapons, while another would be good for recovering from using force powers. As in the first game, the player can choose to align with either the light side or the dark side. Choosing dialogue options that are respectful and empathetic gives the protagonist light side points, while options that are egoistic and evil result in dark side points. If Kumas wasn't dead, he'd be back already. If you find his body, just bring it back. Depending on the level of influence, party members may support the player characters unconditionally or turn against their leader. The player can also exploit high influence by drawing party members to either the light side or the dark side, and some characters can even be trained to use the force. Do you feel it is a... You... You are the darkness in which all life dies, my lord. All life exists to feed your power, and my life, my life is yours. Because of LucasArts forcing Obsidian to finish the game in a short time frame of only 16 months, the game ended up being released in an unfinished state. One of Obsidian's co-founders said that the game was originally going to be released in 2005, but it was later moved up to December 2004. According to him, Obsidian has to choose between getting in trouble or getting it done. Due to this, several cuts had to be made. One of the most major was the droid Planet M478, which was entirely removed from the game after the 2004 E3 event when the team realized that they wouldn't be able to fit it into the schedule. Along with several official patches, a notable fan-made mod called the Sith Lords Restored Content Modification served as an unofficial patch by fixing bugs along with restoring most of the content that was cut from the game. Recently, Aspire brought the game to Nintendo Switch, adding the lost content as free DLC. The game's critical reception upon its release was generally positive. Praise was given to the story, characters and writing, which were noted to be more great than the original Knights of the Old Republic. However, the game received criticism for being too similar to its predecessor in terms of graphics and gameplay systems, as well as being launched in an incomplete state. 